Hey everyone, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, that website address is www.TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. My name is Dan. Um, I'm doing this video because I got inspired after getting another question from you guys. And it's re in regards to, it's related to informed consent, but it's called ASCENT, A-S-S-E-N-T. And I've never actually done a video on this, to my surprise. So as we, as you most likely know, if you've been following this blog, informed consent is required for everyone to join a clinical trial. And I'm, this video is not going to be about informed consent. I've done plenty of those in the past. I'm going to link to them on this blog post if you want to check it out. This is in regards to assent. Assent is what is used in addition to informed consent for either children or people with mental disabilities who may not be able to make an informed dissent on their own, an informed consent on their own, I'm sorry, or an informed decision. So in cases where there's studies being done on children, um, the informed consent is required from a parent or a guardian. And again, informed consent is necessary for every study. However, even though the child is not giving his informed consent or her informed consent, their parent or guardians are, they are they still are required in most cases to give assent. And it's interesting, not all protocols require this, not all physicians, PIs require this, but for the most part it's required in clinical trials. Assent is just making sure, and there's a separate form for this usually, that the child or the person with a mental disability um, still still demonstrates his or her understanding that they're doing a clinical trial and that they can withdraw at any time. I mean, it's it's kind of like they're agreeing to do it, even though they're not, they're not capable of making an informed decision by themselves. Usually an assent is required just to make sure that they're on the same page. So, like I said, this is common for children's studies as well as for people with with diminished capabilities of of, uh, of making an informed decision themselves based on their mental capacities. So oftentimes you'll see this, like in schizophrenia, especially for the inpatient studies or for mental retardation studies, things like that. Um, it's a serious issue. So an informed consent, in cases with an adult, you either have the conservator or a guardian of that person making their informed consent, but at the same time, the investigator, the physician, and the protocol may require, in addition to the informed consent, an assent from the person who will actually do the trial. So like in the case of, of children, again, you know, once the informed consent is signed by the parents or guardians, an assent is usually done on the child, explaining to him or her what the study is, explaining their rights, and just making sure that the child is in agreement to doing this study. And if they're not, they're probably not going to do the trial, even though the parents or guardians gave the informed consent. So assent is still important, even though we don't hear about it much. I've never done a clinical trial where assent is used, ever. It was never necessary. But again, this is Dan from The Clinical Trials Guru. Dot com. Hopefully this helps. Thank you.